hey guys um good morning happy thursday the week is going by really fast um tomorrow our kids come at school and that's exciting um anyway the word today um i got from um darius daniels he is dr darius daniels um he it's called gatekeeping reconstruction 101 uh slash thrive um and the message kind of goes along a little bit with yesterday's message about being on the ledge and falling asleep. Um, this is a message about reconstruction. Um, you know, in our life, we, we go through some very destructive times. There's seasons in our lives that, um, things happen to us, whether, uh, we did it to ourselves or, it was you know something that happened to us um with no cause of our own but god uses those times um that we are going through to rebuild um and um that's called reconstruction so we go through deconstruction which means uh we're everything in us is turned upside down and i have experienced this uh firsthand I have 100% walk through um, deconstruction and uh, reconstruction and building and um, transitioning, transitioning your life from, you know, maybe you lost a job or maybe you went through divorce or maybe your house burned down or maybe you have a death in a family. Um, we all go through transitions in our lives and transitions can either make us or break us so we can succumb to depression and um just not get back up or we can take that transition to help elevate us and reconstruct us to a greater us a greater me um but that greater me um, has to be built uh with the lord uh, to be strong and to be um, fruitful, uh, God has to take you through that. It's it's you know kind of like the wine press um, where you know you are beat to death. The like the grapes are just beat to death uh, in a wine press to um, be able to become the the great tasting wine. And so um, you know that's referenced in in the Bible. Um, as well so what Darius um, is talking about is how we uh, in our lives when we are going through that deconstruction um, you know our devastation is like what are you doing um, if you're not depending upon the Lord then you're going to uh, enter into temptation uh, and temptation is uh, kind of what I talked about yesterday, um, about, uh, or the day before about our poison, uh, that we take, uh, you know, God is setting parameters and has set parameters in our life to protect us, to give us a good life if we just obey. But being our sinful flesh, we don't always do that. Um, we take matters into our own hands. And, um, so if we are at the deconstruction phase, we can easily be enticed into to sin and he said that sin was self destructive um it self imposed nu nuance so that um stands for uh sin is self destruction is that we know better uh but we don't do better and um you know he has another doctor somebody on there with him that's really good and i hadn't heard him before but he talked about how you know um uticus yesterday when i talked about uticus he sat on the windowsill when he was asleep well he darius and this other person today talked about being on the ledge like sitting on the ledge that we sit on the ledge and we teeter with like falling off when in reality you just need to stay away from the ledge um and they talked about certain people in certain places that if you know it's tempting 
then stay away. Do not even put yourself in that. And, you know, I do that with food at home. Um, and, and with, you know, I, I shared in another talk that I had um, an addiction to Mountain Dew, to caffeine. And so I have to literally not keep that in my house. If I keep it in my house, all I'm doing is tempting myself on a daily basis. And that just doesn't make sense. And so that's, you know, if you have a food issue and that you are being tempted with things that you don't want to eat, just don't bring them into your house. That is the best boundary that you can put up for yourself is just don't buy it. And if other people eat it, you still don't have to buy it. They don't have to eat it. Okay. <laughs> Let them buy it. Uh, don't, don't provide it for them. They don't need it either. And so, you know, that has been my philosophy with keeping myself 100, um, uh, is just stay out of, uh, the grocery store, uh, and quit buying that. And just like an alcoholic, they do not go, uh, into bars. Um, you know, they say once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, uh, once in, not, that's not true. I don't mean that. I mean the mindset, like it's recovery. Recovery is every day. Like it, it's not, I've recovered. I'm in recovery. And I, I've said that before, uh, in a talk about addiction is like, you're in recovery. You still, your sinful person still struggles with the desires to have that. And you just have to put up guards to say no, uh, and, uh, you know, guardrails and boundaries and, and practice self-discipline. And one of the fruits of the spirit is self-discipline. So if you are, uh, abiding in Christ and um, being spirit led and spirit filled, then you, one of the fruits of that is self discipline. And it is true. God really helps you in that department. You can't, but our helpmate can. Our friend that he has sent us is so powerfully strong. And um, it's amazing uh, what changes you know in our lives when we are walking in the spirit um, it's very powerful uh, it's very evident um, that that Christ is living in you and you are really submitting to him and um, so change does occur and when you're submitting to the Holy Spirit then you will see that deconstruction that you went through and when you're being reconstructed god is building you back better better than before and and like i said i have to say that is truth 100 percent that is 100 percent truth um and that's what i put in the comments 100 percent truth fire um because when you've experienced a transformation in your life and and God has taken uh, what the enemy meant to um, destroy or the test uh, that God has sent, um, you know, and we fail tests, uh, but we're taught through that and perhaps we won't fail the next one and he will use it all. So um, nothing is wasted, guys. And that's what, you know, I want you to know. I had a student from, she's 21 now, she reached out. And she just thanked me for all of uh, basically the seed that I sown into her. And I reflected and I praised God and I thanked him so much that even in my desperation, even in my darkness, um, even when I was lost and um, not where I am today, God still used me. This, this student said so many complimentary, wonderful things. And, and you know, I remember the student and um, I remember there were struggles there and she was going through a dark time. And she said, you made me feel human. You didn't just treat me like a student. Um, and, you know, the goodness of God is, you know, he has just brought me full circle. I remember talking to the student and now that is my job every day this is what i do i have the wonderful privilege to sow seed into youth that are really at a make or break 
stage stage phase um you know what they take into their mindset and what they believe about themselves and in the actions in the course of what they do with what you give them and only god can reap that harvest okay you can only sow the seed you may never know what you said or did that made a difference unless you are blessed to be able to receive a, a reach out message just out of the blues thank you so much what you said and did to me changed my life and you know so i want you to take heart that even if you are struggling and you are depressed and you're still able to speak truth into other people's lives and you're still able to shine your light despite of where you are god uses that he uses it all um and you know i was able to share with her that the empathy and compassion comes from knowing the crushing um when you are brokenhearted it's really easy to um be empathetic and compassionate to those who are struggling and going through the same thing because you know you have lived that it's truth to you and you can't really have that um insight into other people's lives or even help when you have an experience some brokenness yourself and so that's why i know that god has called me to the brokenhearted because i have been broken not once not twice not three times but over and over and over again and i'm thankful for the brokenness because it has given me revelations it has given me insight it has made me who i am today and I honestly wouldn't want to be anything different. Um, the riches and glory that I have found in Christ because of what I've gone through. I've shared this before. Money can't buy. I, I feel like I'm the richest person in the world. And um, it's not about money. And you know what? Our God, our maker, our creator, our savior, our Lord, he owns it all. You don't have to have money. Uh, he brings it to you. He blesses you in ways that you still need money. Um, and money, you know, monetary finances uh, will pour in uh, when you are um, just listening and obeying what he's telling you to do uh the studio it's growing um you know for a long time it, it struggled a lot and it's still in the reconstruction phase but um god's blessing the studio uh not just monetarily but he is blessing the studio his hand is is in our in the in the midst of uh create uh, the programs that are coming about are all because of him you know he is my um, partner in that creative ministry. And, you know, I'm just thankful for him. And he's bringing along other people to walk alongside me to, to make, you know, his things happen. So, um, I don't know how I got off course there. Oh, and he also said that, um, Darius said, we need to be missions in the marketplace. And that is so, like, such a... You know, I hear words and they click. So I heard marketplace missionary. And I really feel at this season in my life that I might be a market missionary, a marketplace missionary. Um, as the people come um, to the studio and um, the artist work, um, I'm able to share, um, you know, God with them. But not just share, but I'm able to be a testimony in um, putting him first, letting him build, and how he builds strong. Um, and because um, pre-COVID, the, the studio was me. Me, me, me. And I was worn out, and I was failing, and I thought, oh my goodness, the studio is going to go under because I can't do all this. Um 
I was trying to do everything in my own strength, working full time, being a mother, um, being married, uh, taking care of my father-in-law and then the studio. And then, you know, it was, it was tough. Um, and I couldn't do it. And so after COVID, um, you know, the reconstruction started be building and now, um, I'm not worn out. I'm not tired. I'm doing just as much. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it in places where it involves, um, you know, God showed me that you're the composer. Um, you're composing all of this. You'll have conductors that lead. Um, and then the musicians are the people that I bring to the conductors, but you're to compose and facilitate and arrange where the conductors go. And I had someone ask me, how do you do it all? Like you are involved in a lot of things, but yet you still rest and yet you still take time to be with family and you, how do you do it all? And there was only one thing uh, that I told them is I said, I am anointed for this mission. God has anointed me for the mission that he has given me and where he anoints. Okay. So where he appoints, he anoints. Okay. So if you have been called to something and you know in your heart 100% you've been called there he's going to equip you to fulfill that ministry and purpose and you are going to be able to accomplish far more than you ever thought you could do alone because he will help you um you know discern where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be involved in. Um, like you have to be very um, cautious as to who gets your time, what gets your time, and where you um, you know spend your time in, in what you're doing. And so he has given me that discernment and because of that, um, the studio is growing, uh, the circle uh, of Christians and, and women around me, excuse me, have grown and it's, it's all because of him. I give God all the glory. So, you know, I'm going to have to do a part two or something to this message because I didn't get through all of it. Um, because, and it's okay. I'm not going to beat myself up about it because the Holy Spirit works and whatever I say, um, uh, I guess it was meant to be heard, uh, for somebody. Um, and so I'm not going to rush through it. I'm not going to make this video, uh, 30 minutes long. Um, I'll just revisit it at another, another time. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with this guys. We all go through transitions in life. We all are crushed. We all have broken hearts. We all are disappointed. We all get discouraged because that is the world that we live in. Um, that's sin. Um, that's what happened in the garden. It's all rooted there. But um, that doesn't mean that we, that God's done with us. Okay. So we have, uh, our, our lives have been, you know, damaged and destructed. But God, if you're his child, um, he is going to take you through a reconstruction phase. And, you know, you're going to have, um, you know, it just, life's going to bring about trials and battles. But in the reconstruction phase, if you get alone with him, he will fight the battles and those trials with you. And he has already won the war. Okay. And everything you need, you already have. Um, that's another message I have. And you just didn't know um, that you had it. So I'm telling you, you have it. Uh, you'll find it when you get rooted in him. When you start being obedient, not just hearing the word, but doing the word. That's the key. All of this is being rooted in the word and uh, listening and obeying what God tells you. 
it, just because you love him and you know and trust him that he wants the best for you. And so if you're tempted today um, and you're sitting on the ledge, get off the ledge, okay? That's the best advice that I can give you. Um, I'm sharing this message to my Facebook page, but you, like always, you can go to YouTube and listen to it. God will um, personalize that message for you. It will take root in your heart and um, it will be used to help you uh, overcome some things that you're struggling with. Um, just, you know, there's one more thing that he said. The enemy has a personal plan for you. He has a personal plan. Uh, he knows where to get you. And he quoted three people in the Bible. Eve, it was the apple. Um, and um, Judas, it was the uh, silver. And uh, Noah, it was the grapes. And so those are the three that he quoted. And like, Satan is scheming and planning to take you down. Okay? Don't let him take you down. Reflect. Think about um, where he could get you. And stay in guard. Put on full armor of God. Okay. Have a great day. Thanks.